Some history here, I guess. I have had four relationships and have had intimacy with 11 different men in my past. One of the relationships lasted for five years, from ages 21 to 26. For all of the 11 men, none have been able to bring me to orgasm through intimacy. I'm not sure why, but I have always been very difficult to please in that regard, compared to other women. And I have spent most of my life faking pleasure from intimacy. I had spent lots and lots of time trying to teach men how to get me off, and there has never been much improvement. It is not as if I have a low intimacy drive or that I am depressed or anything like that. I have always figured it is just an inherent problem with me. The doctors I have talked to about this just say that all women have a wide variation in terms of how easily we take pleasure from intimacy and how easily we orgasm. None have had a real solution. My neighbor, four houses down, is a divorced guy who moved here from Lebanon a few years ago. I was immediately attracted to him. He was a good looking and had a pretty good body. We began a bit of a friendship at first, starting at a block party. I liked him, but he was also a bit dull and was more interested in video games, eating junk food, smoking Zaza, and lifting weights more than anything I was interested in. We ended up having intimacy one night and it was unbelievable. I had my first orgasm through just normal intimacy. I was in tears at this. I thought I could never find this. I don't even fully understand what he did differently in terms of intimacy, and I still don't to this day. He has only ever had intimacy with three people in his life. I have no clue where he learned these things. I decided not to tell him this. I thought it was a bit embarrassing, but we continued to have intimacy quite a bit. It was like some kind of cloud was lifted. Having very regular pleasurable intimacy was like the greatest happy pill I could ever receive. I genuinely felt happy every single day. I wasn't depressed before, but something was clearly missing. And it turns out what was missing was intimacy. But months and months have gone by now. I think it's been around 10 to 11 months. We have intimacy pretty regularly. It has never declined in quality. We have a very joking relationship with each other and are good friends, but I think we both know we are not right for each other at all relationship-wise. I don't mean to disparage him, but to be perfectly honest, he is a bit of a dumb guy. I'm sometimes a bit bewildered at how little he knows of the world in general. He thought pizza was from Mexico. There is no hope for a relationship between us. And we both know that. We have discussed it. I didn't call him or imply he was dumb during the discussion and LOL. He has no idea how important he is to me. I have always kept a secret from him that he is the only man to give me an orgasm. But now I'm afraid I want a relationship. I want to eventually get married and have children. Yet the thought of not having him, it genuinely scares me. The chances that I find another man who can sexually please me and be a good partner is just too low. I know me. I know I will just settle on a good man who doesn't sexually please me. Some part of me wishes I never found him. Because now I know I will basically always miss this. I am scared that I will end up in a relationship and end it just to go back to him because of how much I will miss the intimacy. And it sucks because for so long I have convinced myself that intimacy isn't important. It isn't everything, etc. And now I feel almost dumb for feeling that way. It isn't everything, but it is extremely important. What the hell do I do? I can't just stay like this with him indefinitely, although I'm sure he would love that LOL. Now, for a few comments before the update, comment one. What if you found someone else? How would you feel? You are assuming that you will be the one who will end up in a relationship, and that may not be the case. In my opinion, intimacy is extremely important in a relationship. You will be miserable if you are married with a house and kids, and you are not satisfied sexually. In my opinion, you should explore a relationship with this guy. What if you find out you have chemistry and running a house together too? Just because he thought pizza was from Mexico does not make him dumb. Could this trait become endearing? Comment two. Dumb ones pound the hardest. A great quote from Big Mouth. One, congratulations. Sounds fun and validating. Two, spend some time focusing on or reflecting on what he is doing that others were not, and have some coaching tips for the next lucky fella. Mental side, foreplay, position, rhythm, angle, size of his junk, carefree attitude. Most decent guys are willing to be coached up, so the more you can give them to work with, the better your odds. 
or just buy him a cookbook and globe and marry him. Either way, serve carne asada pizza at the wedding. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since I last wrote. So my neighbor, the one I've been seeing, he's been acting strange lately. It started small, like he'd cancel our usual hangouts last minute. I didn't think much of it at first, but then I noticed he was spending a lot of time with this woman from the neighborhood. Let's call her Miss Nosy, because she's always poking her head where it doesn't belong. Miss Nosy has always been the type to stir up trouble. She's the one who knows everyone's business and makes sure to spread it around. I never liked her much, but I kept it civil. Anyway, she's been hanging around my neighbor a lot and I can't help but feel a twinge of jealousy. It's ridiculous because we're not in a relationship, but still, it bothers me. One evening, I saw them laughing together on his porch. It hit me harder than I expected. I tried to brush it off, but the next thing I knew, they were hosting a barbecue together. Everyone was invited except me. It was a clear message. I was hurt, not going to lie. I felt betrayed by him and shunned by the community, all thanks to Miss Nosy's influence. But here's where it gets worse. I found out from a mutual friend that Miss Nosy had been spreading rumors about me. She told people that I was the one chasing my neighbor, making it seem like I was desperate. That stung. I've always kept my private life private, and now here she was painting me in a light that was both unfair and untrue. I confronted my neighbor about it. I expected him to deny it, to stand up for me. But he just shrugged and said, it's just talk, doesn't mean anything. I was floored. How could he dismiss it so easily? It felt like a slap in the face. Our friendship, our connection, didn't it mean anything to him? I decided to take action. I couldn't let Miss Nosy ruin my reputation. I gathered evidence of her lies, messages, and accounts from others she'd wronged. I went to the next neighborhood meeting and laid it all out. People were shocked. They had trusted her and she had manipulated them. Seeing her squirm as her lies were exposed was satisfying, but it was a hollow victory. The aftermath was messy. Some people apologized to me, while others avoided me, not knowing what to believe. My neighbor came to me, remorse written all over his face. He admitted he'd been wrong to ignore the situation and that he'd let Miss Nosy's attention get to his head. He said he missed what we had and he was sorry. I was torn. Part of me wanted to go back to the way things were, but another part of me knew that things had changed. I couldn't trust him the same way again. And what about my desire for a real relationship? This whole ordeal had shown me that I needed more than just physical satisfaction. Then, as if things weren't complicated enough, my ex, the one from the five-year relationship, reached out. He was moving back to town and wanted to meet up. He'd always been a good man, just not the right fit for me, especially in the bedroom. But after everything that had happened, I found myself considering it. Maybe it was time to give a real relationship another shot even if it meant sacrificing other aspects of my happiness. I told my neighbor that we needed to stop seeing each other. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. He understood, or at least he said he did. We agreed to remain friends, but there's an awkwardness now that wasn't there before. So here I am, about to meet my ex for coffee, wondering if I'm making the right choice. I guess only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, I won't let anyone else dictate my happiness or my reputation again. Thanks for reading. Ada for exposing my wife's lies to her parents. After she cost me my job, I, 32-year-old male, noticed a couple weeks ago that my wife, 33-year-old female, was acting distant and very uninterested in me. I asked her if she was mad at me, to which she said no, just have been in a funk. I just felt something was off, so I waited until she fell asleep and I went through her phone something I have never done since we were together, over 10 years. Well, upon opening her phone, I found a text thread with a guy, and they were calling each other babe and stuff, along with some extremely explicit texts and pictures. I woke her up and pretty much told her we were done. I left to cool off and came back, and her and I talked more, to which she said he was a musician in Nashville. And he randomly added her on TikTok, and they started talking innocently, to which it lead to something more. She told me she hadn't felt appreciated or wanted in a while, and it just sort of happened, but she didn't know what she wanted. 
I basically told her that if she wanted to run off with some musician, then whatever, but she can be the one to explain it to our kids. We have two young girls. She went to bed and I just stayed up all night, just in complete disbelief, trying to work out my feelings. In the morning, her personality changed and was very apologetic and asked if we could talk later that day. I said, sure, for the sake of our kids. I pretty much cried all day, something I rarely do, but wanted to try and work through it because I don't want my kids to grow up with me, only in their lives, 50% of the time. I went through their messages as I took pictures of them in case I needed them for divorce court. And I noticed that all the pics that were sent to her from this guy were from this person's social media, which seemed odd. As we talked later that day, I asked her more details of them messaging on TikTok. And she said, well, it wasn't his main account. It was another account. And that's why she gave him her number, because he said his other account was going to be banned soon. This immediately confirmed my suspicion that it was a scammer or catfisher and simply did a Google search of TikTok musician scam to find a video from the actual musician saying he was getting reports that people were making fake profiles pretending to be him to scam women. So yeah, my wife of eight years was emotionally cheating on me with a fake person. I honestly don't know what to do. I love her with all my heart, but I'm honestly broken. We have never had a trust issue in 10 years of being together and all of that is gone. I admit that I haven't been the perfect husband I work in professional sports, so I'd work 14 hours a day and come home and just play video games for an hour before bed to de-stress and then do it all over again five more days in a row. So I get that I can be responsible for the deterioration of our relationship that may have pushed her to do this, but I just don't know how I am supposed to trust her and also unsee the text messages, especially the intimacy stuff that I wish she would do with me. Am I overreacting for being hurt and not knowing how to move forward, hurt and confused. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you aren't overreacting by being hurt or not being able to trust her. I think if you want to work on things, you need to go to therapy and you need to start making time for your relationship. Letting the relationship die isn't an excuse for cheating, but even if she hadn't tried to cheat, she probably would have moved on anyway if you all had continued as you were. So you should decide if you want to work on getting your relationship back on track. Mutual appreciation, date nights, effort. The creeps here will start hollering that you should leave because she's for the streets, and you should if you don't feel you can forgive her eventually. But if you can, this catfish thing might be the jolt you need to get things working again. Comment two. Didn't think I'd ever see this so soon. This had happened to me last year, pretty much the same thing. So we ended up getting divorced because of this and a few other issues. It's up to you if you feel like staying for the kids or her yourself. I ended up leaving and we're actually still really good friends and get to see my son every day if I'm able to get free. The biggest thing here is why. You were distant and she stepped out. It's a reason, but not really an excuse. You guys lack communication. So if you want it to work, communicate. If you want to split but be amicable or friendly, then communicate. Don't let words or lack thereof stop you from being happy. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, after that whole mess with the catfish, things took a turn for the worse. My wife, she started acting even more distant, if that's possible. She'd be on her phone all the time whispering when she thought I wasn't around. I tried to shake off the feeling that she was still hiding something. But then, one day, I came home early from work. I walked in on her, crying on the phone. She was begging someone not to tell me something. I confronted her and after a lot of yelling, she admitted she'd borrowed a huge sum of money from her parents without telling me. Said it was to help the musician before she knew he was a fake. Her parents were threatening to tell me because they were worried about her. I was floored. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money here, money we didn't have, and now her parents were involved? It felt like a slap in the face. I thought we were partners, but here she was making these huge decisions behind my back. I didn't even know who she was anymore. But wait, it gets better. The next day, her brother shows up at our door. He's furious, accusing me of ruining their family. Turns out, my wife had spun a story to her family that I was the one with the spending problem, that I was the reason we were in debt. Her brother, he's always been protective of her. 
and he bought the whole lie. I tried to explain, but he wouldn't listen. He left, saying he'd make sure everyone knew what kind of person I really was. I felt like I was being walked all over, and I was just taking it. I was trying to keep the peace for our kids, but it was eating me up inside. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. I was a mess. Then, as if things couldn't get any more complicated, my boss called me into his office. He'd heard rumors about my financial troubles, thanks to my wife's brother, no doubt. He said the company couldn't risk having someone with my issues in such a high-profile position. Just like that, I was put on indefinite leave. No job, a mountain of debt, and a family that thought I was the villain. I was at rock bottom. But then, something inside me snapped. I couldn't let this be my life. I took action. I called her parents myself, told them the whole truth. They were shocked, to say the least. They hadn't realized the extent of the lies their daughter had told. They apologized to me, and we started to work out a plan to deal with the debt. My wife, she was furious that I'd gone to her parents. But when she saw that I wasn't just going to roll over and take the blame, something changed. She broke down, admitted she'd been wrong, and for the first time in a long time, we actually talked, really talked about our marriage, our kids, our future. We're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot to work through, a lot of trust to rebuild. But for the first time in a long time, I feel like maybe, just maybe, we can get through this together. Thanks for reading. Thank you. Ada for choosing my baking over my boyfriend's gluten-free needs. My boyfriend, who is 23 years old, and I, who am 21 years old, have been dating for about seven months. He has celiac disease and is insistent that there be no gluten, not only in the kitchen, but also in any part of our future home. Baking bread has been a significant hobby of mine for years. I've spent a lot of time improving my skills to be able to make delicious homemade pastries and breads for the people I love. During one of our first dates, he asked me if I would be happy if he bought a separate kitchen for us in our future home. In response, I said, of course not, that wouldn't make sense. He wanted to make me happy, but he has changed his mind and now realizes that he wouldn't want that. It didn't fully hit me the impact of giving up gluten until a friend offered me a spot in a pretzel making class at the King Arthur Baking School. I realized that there was no point in taking the class when it's a hobby I would have to give up entirely. I said no when I really wanted to say yes. I asked him if he would allow me to have a separate space from the home, like an outside shed with an oven, sink, and counter so that I could continue baking. I assured him that I would take all necessary measures to prevent any contamination in our actual living space. However, he was not comfortable with the idea at all. I have had my boyfriend over countless times for dinner and breakfast, and I have even dedicated an oven in my home, specifically for baking his food. I also make gluten-free desserts for him. I'm very careful to prevent cross-contamination. I am content with what I am doing now, but I don't know if I can live the way he wants me to, as if I have celiac disease myself. It is extremely difficult for me to accept that there is a time limit on me being able to bake bread, pizzas, and pastries for myself and the people I love. Baking has become such a huge part of my identity. I suppose I am making this post because I am specifically wondering if this is something I should sacrifice. He does so much for me, treats me very well, and I have always believed that love comes with significant sacrifices. My family loves him. However, every time I bake something for my friends and family, it saddens me. I'm aware that there are gluten-free baking recipes, but the process and the result are simply not the same. I want to be able to give him the best gluten-free dishes I can make, but I also want to continue sharing the pastries that my friends and family love. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. My husband was diagnosed with celiac disease a few years ago. I'm also a hobby baker. We immediately made our entire house gluten-free as he had already suffered a lot of damage from gluten and we couldn't afford the risk of cross-contamination. I started experimenting with gluten-free baking and found it very enjoyable and fulfilling. If I need to bake something with gluten, I go to a friend's house. For me, it was an easy adjustment and an obvious choice. If you're resistant to the idea and it's only been seven months, you might want to reflect on whether this relationship is right for you. There's nothing wrong with realizing you're incompatible for any reason. Good luck. Comment two. While he is absolutely justified in needing a celiac safe environment, 
It doesn't mean that giving up something you love won't be difficult. This is not something that can be compromised on, especially for him, as it is medically necessary. But making major dietary changes for a partner can be challenging no matter the reason, especially if cooking for others is an important part of your identity. Assess whether giving up baking and eating gluten is something you can be content with in the long term. If not, you may not be compatible. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for this update. So let me tell you about the whirlwind of the past few days. Remember how I was torn about giving up my baking hobby? Well, things took a turn. My boyfriend's sister, who's always been super supportive of my baking, offered to help me set up a small business selling my pastries. She even talked about investing some money into it. I was over the moon, thinking this could be the solution to keep my passion alive without affecting my boyfriend's health. But here's where it gets messy. Turns out, she had an ulterior motive. She's been feeling overshadowed by her brother, my boyfriend, for years. She saw this as an opportunity to drive a wedge between us, hoping that the stress of a new business would make me less attentive to him. I had no clue about any of this until I overheard her bragging to a friend on the phone about her clever plan. I was shocked and hurt. I thought she was on my side, but it didn't stop there. She had convinced my boyfriend that the business was a bad idea, saying it would take up too much of my time and pull me away from him. He confronted me, saying he felt betrayed that I would even consider it without talking to him first. I tried to explain, but he wouldn't listen. Feeling cornered, I agreed to drop the whole business idea. I thought it would smooth things over, but I was wrong. My boyfriend started to get paranoid, thinking I was resentful and would start baking behind his back, which could endanger his health. He suggested we take a break to think things over. I was devastated. I felt like I was losing everything, my passion, my relationship, and now it seemed even my self-respect. I spent the next day at my parents' house trying to make sense of it all. My mom, seeing me so upset, decided to have a chat with my boyfriend. She's always been the mediator in the family. After a long talk, my boyfriend came over to apologize. He admitted he overreacted and that his sister's meddling had clouded his judgment. He said he wanted to find a way for me to keep baking. We agreed to set up a small, separate baking space in the garage of our future home. It was a compromise, but it felt like a win. Just when I thought we were back on track, his sister dropped another shocker. She confessed to my boyfriend that she'd been lying about her support for my baking business. She admitted she was jealous of our relationship and wanted to sabotage it. My boyfriend was furious with her. He couldn't believe his own sister would go to such lengths. The aftermath was intense. My boyfriend and I are trying to rebuild trust, not just between us, but within his family too. His sister is now going to therapy to work on her issues. It's a lot to process and I'm still reeling from the betrayal. But here's the thing, I'm still baking. I'm doing it for me because it's part of who I am. And my boyfriend, well, he's trying to be supportive. He's even taken a few bites of my gluten-free experiments, which trust me, is a big step for him. Thanks for reading this update. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.